daughters of Babylon, we Good evening, everyone. We come together on this Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, which is a date in history, but is representative of so many varied dates in history. It's known as the sadded, saddest day of our year, the time when collective Jewish memory comes to create space for mourning, for destruction, for what we call the, sina, the sin of sinat chinam, of senseless or baseless hatred. It's that sin that we say destroyed the first temple when neighbors turned on each other and when the community did not live up to its full potential. And so all of these different dates in history are said to have happened on or around Tisha B'Av. So it has become this opportunity to remember all of them. And as hard for us to, as reform liberal Jews, to connect with the disruption of the temple. And so we also look at it not only as a specific event or a specific date in history, but an opportunity to really connect with the words of Echa of lamentation and to lean into mourning on a more personal level in so many ways, which is why I know many of you are here this evening, because we've invited you to remember your loved ones, to grieve together in community, to light a candle as we mourn and remember and sit in a little bit of despair, but allow that despair to turn into hope for the future, because in so many ways, Tisha B'Av is the beginning of the high holiday season because we can't be emotionally and spiritually prepared and ready to look inward and to do the work of self-reflection and moving into new spaces and into new years with new promises of the future if we haven't done the work of Tisha B'Av, of sitting in a space of sorrow and despair and mourning. And as you may have read earlier today in the statement that we put out to our community, this Tisha B'Av has even yet another meaning because we are seeing the sin of Sinat Chinam, of senseless hatred, of potential destruction of the modern state of Israel and creating opportunities for hatred of minority groups, of ways of life that are different from specific versions and visions of Judaism be played out in the stage of Israel. So for so many reasons, we remember the history, we sit in this place of despair, but we can't stay there. We have to, as we said, also move towards hope. So as we pray this evening, we invite you to at times sit in that despair, sit in the grief, whether it's personal or communal, and then to find the space for hope and move forward. So we continue again with the waters of Babylon as we remember. On Tisha B'Av, we mourn for those who lost their lives in historical events said to have occurred on the ninth of day of Av, the Hebrew month. We remember, we will not forget. 
You remember 586 BCE, the Babylonian armies sacked Jerusalem, destroying Solomon's temple and sending the Jewish people into exile. You remember 70 CE, the Roman legions under Titus crushed the Jewish revolts, leveled Jerusalem and the second temple, massacre thousands of Jews in the streets, and carry off others into slavery. We remember 135, the fortress of Betar falls to the Romans, ending the revolt of Bar Kokhba. And we remember 1096, the crusades that bring death and destruction to Jewish communities up and down the Rhine Valley. We remember 1242, 24 cartloads of Talmudic volumes are burned in Paris by officials of the church. In 1290, 1306, and 1492, Jews are expelled from England, of France, and Spain. In 1648, Melnitsky's hordes massacre thousands of Polish Jews. In 1882, government-instigated pogroms take place throughout Jewish areas of Russia. In 1929, scores of Jews are slaughtered in, Arabs rioting, in Arab rioting in Hebron. In 1945, one-third of the Jewish people, six million human beings, are slaughtered in the Holocaust by the Nazis. By the waters, the waters of Babylon, we like to invite anyone who is joining us in memory of someone to light candles in their honor. Please join us here at the table. I will light our candle, our memorial candle, our yard site candle, and then you'll find matches and tea lights on the table. Please take a moment and remember the people who are bringing you here today. No.
struggle to take care of one another. Comfort us, comfort us in our wilderness. Comfort us as we struggle with this world. Nahamu, nahamu, ami. Comfort us, comfort us in our wilderness. Comfort us as we struggle to take care of one another. Comfort us, comfort us in our wilderness. Comfort us as we struggle with this world. Please join me. The light of life. The light of life is a finite flame. Like these candles, life is kindled, it burns, it glows. It is radiant with warmth and beauty, but soon it fades, its substance is consumed, and it is no more. Let our darkness be dispelled by your love, that we may rise above fear and failure. Our steps sustained by faith, you give meaning to our days. You are our support and our trust. Shema Join me. Begin with us. Dear, Dear God, God, so much innocent, innocent bloodshed. bloodshed. We, we are, are supposed, supposed to be created in your image, but oh, how we have distorted it. it. When we, we recall the beastly acts of people, we are ashamed to be human. When we, we read of the nobility of their victims, we are proud to be Jews. Teach us, O oh God, to honor our martyrs by being vigilant in defense of our people everywhere and by fighting cruelty, persecution, and hate. But must cruelty always be? Must viciousness ever be the signature of humanity? No, no, we refuse to accept that. We refuse to give hatred the last word, because we have known the power of love. We refuse to believe that cruelty will prevail, because we have felt the strength of kindness. We refuse to award the ultimate victory to evil because we believe in you. So help us, O oh God, to draw strength from our faith, and help us, O oh God, to live by our faith. Where there is hatred, may we bring love. Where there is pain, may we bring healing. Where there is darkness, may we bring light. Where there is despair, may we bring hope. Where there is discord, may we bring harmony. Where there is strife, may we bring peace. 
make this a better world and begin with us. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Hashivenu Adonai Eloheinu Hashivenu Leshalom Hashivenu Adonai Eloheinu Hashivenu Shalom, let there be love, let there be love, and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. I invite those who are comfortable in doing so to rise for tefillah for our central prayers. Adonai, sifat hai tiftah ufi agitilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe avotinu v'imotinu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Tzara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'hanora, El Elyon, Gomel chasadim tovim v'konei hakol, V'zocher chaser v'odim ahot, U'mevigir l'aliv nivniem, L'man shemo v'ahava, Melech ozer u'moshya u'magein, Baruch at Adonai, Magein Avraham v'ezrat zara, Ata gibor le'olam Adonai, Mechayi ha'kol ata rab le'hoshia, Morid ha'tal, Mechalkel chayim v'chesed, Mechayi ha'kol v'rachamim rabim, Somech noflim v'rofech olim, Umatir asurim, Umekayim umanato l'shenei afar, Michamoch ha'ba'al gevorot, Umido melach, Melech mimit mechayi umatzmiach yeshua, V'neman ata l'chayot ha'kol,
meditations of my heart, of, of my, my heart, heart, be acceptable to you, Adonai. We begin with the Book of Lamentations. As Rabbi mentioned, this has become a central part of Tisha B'Av and of our focus, not on the destruction of the temple which led to the birth of rabbinic and eventually reformed Judaism, but on the feeling of lament, on the feeling of mourning, on the feeling of being ripped apart at the seams as only a people who have lost everything, their home, their place, their way of practice, their loved ones, their place of home can know. We begin with the reading of Lamentations. We will have one page that is for the reader and one page that is for the community. I hope it is large enough for you to read along. Rabbi. Chapter one. Echa, alas, lonely sits the city once great with people. She that was great among nations is become like a widow. The princess among states is become a thrall. Bitterly she whip, weeps in the night, her cheek wet with tears. There is none to comfort her. All of her friends, all of her allies have betrayed her. They have become her foes. Judah has gone into exile because of misery and harsh oppression. When she settled among the nations, she found no rest. All her pursuers overtook her in the narrow places. Adonai, in my, my midst, midst has rejected, rejected all, all my heroes. He has proclaimed the set time against me to crush my young men. men. As, As in a press, Adonai, Adonai has trodden fair maiden Judah. For these things do I weep. My, my eyes flow with tears. Far from me is any comforter who might, might revive my spirit. My children are forlorn, for the, the foe has prevailed. Zion, Zion spreads out her hands. She has, she has no, no one to comfort her. Adonai has, has summoned against Jacob, God's enemies all about him. him. Jerusalem has, has become, become among them a thing, thing unclean. Echa, alas, Adonai in God's wrath has shamed Ver Zion, has cast down from heaven to earth the majesty of Israel. God did not remember God's footstool on God's day of wrath. Adonai has laid waste without pity. All the inhabitants of Jacob God has raised in God's anger. Fair Judah's strongholds God has brought low in dishonor. The kingdom and its leaders in blazing anger God has cut down all the might of Israel. God has withdrawn God's right hand. In the presence of the foe God has ravaged Jacob like flaming fire consuming on all sides. Your seers, seers prophesy to you delusion and folly. Finally, they, they did, did not, not expose your iniquity so as to restore your fortunes, but prophesied to you oracles of delusion and deception. All who pass your way clap their hands at you. They hiss and wag their head at fair Jerusalem. Is this the city that was called perfect in beauty, joy of all the earth? All your enemies jeer at you. They hiss and gnash their teeth and, and cry, cry we've, we've ruined, ruined her. her. Ah, uh, this, this is, is the day, day we hope for. for. We, we have lived, lived to see it. it. Remember, O Adonai, what has befallen us. Behold and see our disgrace. 
Our heritage has passed to aliens, our homes to strangers. We have become orphans, fatherless. Our mothers are like widows. We must pay to drink our own water, obtain our own kindling at a price. We are hotly pursued, exhausted. We are given no rest. We hold out a hand to Egypt, to Assyria, to our fill of bread. Why have you forgotten us utterly, us utterly, forsaken, forsaken us, us for all time? time. Take, Take us back, O Adonai, to yourself, and let us come back. Renew our days as of old. You have rejected us, us bitterly, bitterly raged, raged against, against us. us. Take, Take us, us back, O Adonai, to yourself, and let us come back. Renew our days as of old. Lama la netzach. Tishkachenu, ta'azvenu le'orech yamim. Hashivenu Adonai elecha, v'nashuva, chadesh yamenu kekedem. Ki imaos mastanu, mastanu, ketzavta aleinu ad me'od. Hashivinu Adonai Elecha Venashuva Chadesh Yameinu Kekedem. The Book of Lamentations, known in Hebrew as Megillat Echa, was written in response to the calamity that befell Judah in 586 BCE when the Babylonian Empire destroyed Jerusalem and exiled all its inhabitants. However, Echa is not a historical account of the events. The book laments the pain of a nation and evokes the theological nuances that accompany the attempt to grapple with catastrophe. The result is a work of literary art that is astonishing and vivid in its portrayal of the human struggle with God. According to tradition, our prophet Jeremiah, the saddest man in the Hebrew Bible, was tasked with an impossible mission to decry the fallen religious state of the Jewish nation and to predict its downfall. His unpopular message ultimately lands him in jail, fearing for his life. No one likes a whistleblower. It took great personal courage to oppose the bands of false prophets who reassure the nation that their merry party could continue. Jeremiah was a different breed. And he faced constant hostility from people blinded by selfishness and poisoned by corruption. Sadly, Jeremiah also personally witnesses the ultimate obliteration of Jerusalem. And he documents and laments the unbearable nightmare he experiences. The book of Echa oozes with the pain of abandonment and the darkness of a world beyond hope. Jeremiah selects a very odd word to begin his lament. The term Echa loosely translates to the question we all wrestle with, how? As Yael Ziegler wrote, troubling theological questions simmer beneath Echa's surface. These questions relate to God's nature and to the manner of the relationship between the community and God. Can humans understand God's ways? Is God an ally or an enemy? Are the people's sins responsible for the calamity or is it disproportionate and unjust? Is the nation defiant or remorseful, ashamed or outraged? These are critical topics in the book illustrating the intersection between emotions and theology and outlining a blueprint for coping with pain and loss. As we read through it, we are reminded that humans have the ability to combat the onslaught of hostile forces that swirl around us by drawing on the hope and faith that lie at their core. In this way, Echa weaves a magnificent portrait of the resources and resilience that lie deep in the human soul. And in the Stone Tanakh, it teaches, according to the rabbis, a Messiah will be born on Tisha B'Av, meaning that a proper understanding of and reflection upon the causes of destruction reveal that contained within it are the seeds of redemption. 
Eicha and its subsequent interpretations are reminding us that suffering and loss are a part of the human condition and that there is no way, no way to have all the answers. We are invited to wrestle with God. We are invited to be angry with God. We are invited to question and struggle just as Jeremiah did in his day. As Reformed Jews, we are invited to think about how we can respond to grief, to distress, to loss. Echa does not contain the answers, but instead it provides us with a guide. There are those who have come before us and those who will come after us with the same questions and the same desire to find comfort and healing, even in the shadows of destruction and suffering. As it teaches in the last verse of Echa, Hashivenu Adonai Elecha Venashuva Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem. Take us back, Adonai, to yourself and let us come back. Renew our days as of old. May we all continue to find pathways towards healing and wholeness. Even if it means being whole means that we are all a little broken too. On this Tisha B'Av, we remember our loved ones, Rita Arnold, Niles Aspland, Marshall Becker, Viora Lucille Becker, Marie Belsky, Mildred Bernstein, Lee A. Bernstein, Eliubav Blacher, Francis V. Blumkin, Joel Thomas Bohm, Alfred Mark Brodkey, Barbara Roberts Burke, Patricia Ann Patty Burks Wright, John David Burns, Joseph Burrell, Alexander Lee Christensen, Dr. Edward S. Cohn, David Cooper, Raimundo D. DeSico, Susan Eisner, Lois Endelman, Trudy Engel, Jack Frazier, Lee E. Fredericks, Arlene Fredericks, Melvin Freeman, Ellen Freeman, Barbara Lieberman Froman, Samuel Gendler, Manny Goldberg, Jerome P. Jerry Gordman, Linda Gordman, Alexander Gudis, Nancy V. Hornstein, Julie Kalman, Irving E. Kaminsky, Robert Cattleman, Dennis G. King, Joseph Kirschenbaum, Kivi Kirschenbaum, Gerald Cole, Clifford A. Leviton, Edward Marvin Malishuk, Diane Barna Malishuk, Marilyn P. Manvitz, David Marshall, Leon Martin, Frankie Gross McIntyre, Edwin Robert Bob Newman, Ethel Norman, Jean Osborne, Bernie Ostrovich, Warren E. Bud Phillips, Ralph Jerome Post, 
Lillian Cohen Roberts, John Robinson, Joan Sandra Rosen, Mendel Rosenberg, Sandra Rosenberg, Jacques Sachs, Chad Thomas Schaefer, Eugene Leonard Schweiderman, David Sherman, Edith Silverstein, Ronald Simons, Adam, Adam Joshua Skog, Gila Smedland, Carol Smedland, Gilbert Smith, Martin E. Sofer, Harry Stern, Shelley Green Stern, Judith K. Stern, Maynard Telpner, Sally Priestman Telpner, F. H. Bud Turkle, Mike Verib, Arnie Weintraub. If there are any additions or corrections, we invite you to mention them at this time. Do we have any additions in the chat? Marshall Privet. Our griefs and sympathies are mingled. We invite all those who so choose to rise in body and or in spirit in solidarity with the mourners as we join together in Kadisha to a mourner's Kaddish. Yikadal v'yikadash me'i rabah v'yalmad y'brach y'rutei v'yalmlich malchutei v'chai y'chon v'yomichon v'chai y'dechol b'et Yisrael Bagalav is man kari vimru amen. Yehesh me raba me barak le alamula meal maya. Yit barak vish tabak vit bar vit romam vit nase. Vita dar vita le vita lal shmeda kudisha brihu. Le ela kol kol brikata vishirata. Chush brikata venechamata. Damiram be alma vimru amen. Yehesh lama raba min shemaya. Bechayim aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael v'imru amen. O se shalom b'mromav, hu ya'ase shalom. Aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael v'al ko Yoshvei Tevel v'imru amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved. Together as one loving family, let us say amen. amen. You may be seated. Ashivenu, Ashivenu, Adonai Elecha, Vena Shuva, Vena Shuva. Turn to us, Adonai, and we will return to you as well. May we find comfort in each other. May we find comfort in our family and friends and in our community. And on this great day of grief, may we be reminded, even in the most challenging of days, that there is always hope. Hope that we will come out that we will come out new, forever changed, but able to move on to a new tomorrow. This, this concludes our Tisha B'Av service.